The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to the Samaritan town called Seca, near the land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well is there, and Jesus, tired by the journey, sat straight down by the well. It was about the sixth hour, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had come, had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, What? You are a Jew and you ask me a Samaritan for a drink? Jews, in fact, do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus replied, If you only knew what God is offering and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have been the one to ask and he would have given you living water. You have no bucket, sir, she answered, and the well is deep. How could you get this living water? Are you a greater man than our father Jacob who gave us this well and drank from it himself with his sons and his cattle? Jesus replied, whoever drinks this water will get thirsty again, but anyone who drinks the water that I shall give will never be thirsty again. The water that I shall give will turn into a spring inside him, welling up to eternal life. Sir, said the woman, give me some of that water so that I may never get thirsty and never have to come here again to draw water. I see you are a prophet, sir. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain while you say that Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation comes from the Jews. But the hour will come, in fact, it is here already, when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. That is the kind of worshipper the Father wants. God is spirit, and those who worship must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah, that is Christ, is coming, and when he comes, he will tell us everything. I who am speaking to you, said Jesus, I am he. Many Samaritans of the town had believed in him on the strength of the woman's testimony, so when the Samaritans came up to him, they begged him to stay with them. He stayed for two days, and when he spoke to them, many more came to believe. And they said to the woman, Now we no longer believe because of what you told us. We have heard him ourselves, and we know that he really is the savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. Dear sisters and brothers, actually I read the shorter form. The longer form is double the length. And you know this text very familiar, all of you. I'm sure you're familiar. Where Jesus met or rather meets the woman at the well. And in order, this is a very beautiful, beautiful passage. It may take one hour to explain the passage, but I have to concise it and give to you briefly. You can speak for one hour in this beautiful text. Why the woman comes at midday? She has five husbands, he's now with the fifth one. And why Jesus purposely goes to the well? Why the apostles has to go to the shop, to the town to buy food? Why Samaritan and Jews cannot meet? All these have got very, very in-depth meaning. <coughs> but I'm only going to share one part of it, or rather very briefly. I remember many years ago I was traveling from Chiang Mai, Thailand to Bangkok by bus. And from there I boarded a train to Butterworth. And as I got into the train, all were Thais, 
all were speaking crying crying kata rabain kala i don't know what they were speaking and so i was wondering well am i going to travel overnight next day morning i got boarded the train and next day evening or rather mid day i have to reach badovat so <coughs> then i spotted this girl young girl in a 20s early 20s japanese girl and so she also was very happy to have me there because we both can talk in english so then from her place she came to my place and exchanged to that one of this mutual exchange with this thai and so we started chatting until the wee hours and as i was talking to her she asked what are you doing and i told her what i am doing and she shared her her little experience is traveling all of asia and then uh, we were talking about god it was strange for her to speak about god to her because most most japanese don't believe in god so as i was talking to her about god i said why you don't believe in god do do you think there's no god and she said we know we know but vast majority of japanese don't want to believe in god because when you believe in god you have to go to the temple you have to go to the church then you have to do some things and you don't have you cannot do something the do's and don'ts will be there <coughs> so it is better we don't believe so when you don't believe easy lah just don't believe in god and so we live our life as and how we live how we can live and so she went on like that dear sisters and brothers many people today stop going to church stop believing in god all over the world especially in the western world and i must congratulate you truly truly you're wonderful you're here in the church amazing because where i have traveled sometimes i see the churches very few people sit very big huge church only some places there are some places still people to go and fill up the church why i say this when you don't want to see god when you don't want to meet him there will be surely no transformation nothing is going to happen to us we will remain the same old person where we were we will be there today and tomorrow we will be the same when jesus meets this samaritan woman immense transformation took place in her without she realizing it jesus purposely went there to meet her knowing very well her background and all of us here we are broken we are sinful some of us are sinning more than others some are habitual sinners some of us are, some of us are wayward and yet we are in church but he is so so loving he wants to touch us just like he wants that woman to experience him <coughs> and you know what that one thing in her changed her radically until she was able to preach able to speak about Jesus that one thing was her heart her heart was so churned so churned that she cannot but respond to God's love respond to Jesus love and so she made a radical change in her life happen you know yesterday i had this tamil speaking youth had a session from morning till about 5 o'clock so i went late in the evening to join them as i was away in kl so when i joined them <laughs> then there was some sharing among them so one of them said to the group i called them up to share a few of them to volunteer and so one of them shared and said hey during the season of lent you know many go vegetarian i'm sure some of you are vegetarian some of you don't eat meat some of you fast some at least a few hours some of you pray more so this person said hey don't just think about vegetarian not to eat food or not or to eat not to eat meat or not uh, or eat meat your vegetarianism must be in your heart that struck me what does that mean for me some of us we fast we do penances 40 days you know i don't eat meat but every single day bad words will come out from my mouth every single day i talk eh, there will be one bad word 
you can fast for 300 you can fast for 100 days you can be vegetarian for 100 days but when this mouth utters all the bad words in the world not a single day is to go is to bear fruit so be right about your penances about your devotion about your sacrifices it is not what you do it is this heart that has to be pure and then this woman the moment jesus captured her heart she was so transformed and dear sisters and brothers you encounter jesus every sunday every sunday in the eucharist and you ought to encounter him every day how is there a well in your house when you pray when you do alms giving when you read the bible when you pray the rosary when you remember god when you meditate a few minutes 5 minutes 10 minutes you are bound to experience him dear sisters and brothers and i guarantee you the scripture says even the first reading the fountain of living water welled up in her the living water welling up in you meaning the holy spirit is working tremendously in her life and so there was such a beautiful transformation in her is the holy spirit welling up in you to such an extent that you are able to enjoy this life to the fullest john 10:10 10, 10 tells us i came that you may have life and have life to the fullest not half measure as a catholic as a christian it is the, to the fullest it is the maximum so if you are living a christian life there cannot be any other way but to enjoy this life and the woman the moment she encountered jesus jesus touched her and how come we don't change sometimes we come to church every week we are still holding on to our old habits the moment jesus touched her her life changed how many times do we have to wait for jesus to touch us dear sisters and brothers open your heart open your heart and avail him to come and dwell inside and you will see transformation taking place the moment we don't we don't allow him we will continue to wallow in the old ways of our lives and there will be no, you can have hundreds of lent seasons nothing is going to happen you can do lots of fasting nothing is going to happen when the moment you open your heart to the grace of god you see beautiful things happening in you and then all that fasting alms giving prayers will make lot of meaning will bear fruit and you know sisters and brothers don't desire to merely be successful to be successful desire to be fruitful many of us we want to be successful in the eyes of the world but let us bear fruit and the lord will never disappoint you allow him to work in your lives and surely he will captivate you the woman was captured by jesus whom are you captured by you know sometimes when i see some couples you know after many years of marriage suddenly you see this couple husband and wife they look like twins you know or rather they look like from the same family husband and wife like brother and sister because they are so merged together they are so one that they become like so much inseparable they become even their looks become like that why i say this some people are not all hey i've been the same la father no change no some people because of that chemistry because of that pool because of that attraction there is so much of transformation that they become so one like the scripture says they are no more two but one and likewise you sisters and brothers when you are so transformed when you are so pickled when you are so in the lord that not only your your 
appearance will change but your inner self will begin to shine will begin to be a fountain of living water that you are welling up with so much of life water brings life water brings vibrancy water brings rejuvenation water brings newness of life and you are that person and you will be that person and so enjoy enjoy this life that is what is calling to you don't be dormant don't be passive don't be sulking don't be downcast but always i am a child of god i am so filled with the power of the holy spirit welling up inside me and i and so i will be this way because this is the only way because this is the way of jesus so dear sisters and brothers let us not give up don't be broken hearted don't be dampened don't be downcast don't sulk he will lift you up he lifted up the samaritan woman he will lift us up whatever your sins may be he wants to touch you embrace you he wants to kiss you he kissed the samaritan woman by his words by his compassion by his mercy and he will do the same to each one of us he loves you take care to enjoy this life to the fullest amen